Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Cardboard Addicts Podcast. You're joined by me, Harley, also known as Epic Dad from Epic Tube HD. And of course, we've got our other members with us. However, we are missing one today, unfortunately. So let's go ahead and get right to it. To my left here, we got... Hey, what's going on, guys? I'm Centurion XYZ, but you can call me Zen. Below me? Uh, got Grumpy Charizard here, but you can just call me Grumpy Charizard. And the last guy on the podcast. Suit on. Choking back a laugh here. Sorry. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> so, anyways, guys, yeah, we are unfortunately missing Minuteman Ren today. Uh, he was an, unable to make it with us on this holiday weekend, yeah, he but he will be back work. next week. You so, ended thing. He had to work. That is right. Uh, even on this holiday weekend. So I thought he was on a boat. No, that was he yesterday. On a boat? That was yesterday. I thought he was living it up. <laughs> hey, living it up. Living it up. No, he's back to reality. So, I want to first just say we apologize to all of you out there. Uh, we were supposed to go live today, actually, at 12 o'clock. And unfortunately, YouTube... Uh, requires a 24 hour notice for any new channel to go before they go live, they have to be approved. And we were yeah. unaware of this, so we, we have to. It was the wait. bikini stunt that I did. Come on, <laughs> yeah, you and that hot that uh, the pool man, we got to get off that. Mm. But the, uh, we got you here today. We've got a couple topics we want to discuss with you. Now, this is going to be a shorter podcast than what we normally do today. Again, we're missing our good guy, Minute Man Ren. Um, He's the talk of the group. That's what slows us down. Complete. Yeah, he keeps it. He just keeps it so slow with his talking. Between you and and Ren, geez, Grumpy, it's oh, crazy man. man. Shut so, up. The first thing I would like to do, everybody, is we have a really, really cool and epic announcement. Uh, if Zen, you want to go ahead and give him that that brand new news we just got this week. Yeah. So we are now sponsored. By a really <laughs> awesome. <laughs> what was that? What was that sound effect? <laughs> well, I didn't want to be too loud, but you know, doing the whole like the sound panel here. I hate okay, that okay, noise. okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we uh, <clears throat> we are now sponsored by <clears throat> PokeCharles.com, and we've been friends with Adam from PokeCharles for a long time. Uh, I know that uh, Epic and I have both gotten product from him. Uh, Me too. Since he's been, you know, doing stuff, uh, I, I don't know if Grumpy and Sudon have as well. I think no, I uh, not yet. Yeah, I think I'm poor. Did. I got those vivid voltage uh, building battles. I intend yeah. to. I intend to. So we're we're extremely excited to announce that we are now sponsored by uh, Pokey Charles, and this is uh, this is a good partnership for us. It's a good partnership for Pokey Charles, and it's a good partnership for you guys, the viewers, because. One of the main things that we wanted to make sure was that we were taking care of you. And uh, Adam has always been great with the community. He's always tried to keep his prices uh, fair through all of this difficult uh, times that we've gone through with Pokemon. It's, you know, it's been very difficult to do that. And he has uh, he's done his best to keep those prices fair. But on top of that, uh, we are seeing prices of everything starting to drop. And we are also announcing that we have two really awesome discount codes for you guys. Now, Harley, do we want to give them the discount codes a little later or do we want to we'll just, just, yep. We're going to do it after the first segment. We'll hand those, those codes out. But in the meantime, what we do ask is that they please make sure they're subscribed to both cardboard addicts podcast and pokey Charles, their YouTube channel. If you can subscribe to them and you can also follow them on Instagram and we'll, Twitter, I we'll try to link everything down below for you. Yeah, yes, we will definitely do that. We'll link everything down below, um, and we will give you guys the discount code here in a little bit. Make sure you you continue to watch. We've got some really uh, interesting topics today. So let's, uh, Harley, if you want to take over real quick, and, and let's talk about that. All right. So it is the holiday weekend. We're all supposed to be out here celebrating uh, this wonderful country of ours. It's Fourth of July, also or better known as Independence Day, uh, 1776. And 
you know, it's it's a day of celebration and uh, it's a day Unless of also. American, and it's just another day. It's the day we yeah. beat the aliens, right? <laughs> yeah. They, they, they came when, like I believe, 96. I we sent Will Smith, Will Smith, Smith. up. Yeah, yeah, Will yeah Smith. we sent Will Save Smith up to, to save the day. Will Smith, Jeff uh, Goldblum. <laughs> but if you're from, if you're if you're one of our viewers outside in from Europe or Asia, yeah, don't worry about it. You can just cut all this out. But uh, <laughs> just know that so, we still love you. You know, yeah, yeah we you still love you. That part. But uh, unfortunately, it hasn't been all happy this weekend. Uh, some major major stuff has gone down in our uh, I want to say small community, but the community isn't small anymore. It's extremely huge. And uh, it doesn't take much when the upper echelon or the more well-known people in the hobby uh, start having tweet wars or YouTube wars or whatever the case may be uh, in differences between them. And that unfortunately did occur this weekend uh, between two individuals, one who's a content creator, um, also a player of the game. The other one is known for helping bring the game to the United States and also known for uh, their enormous and insanely uh, large collection of well-known first edition cards, most notably Charizards. And basically uh, indifferences happened and there's been a lot of back and forth on it. Now we here at the podcast, we're not going to be those people to go in and try to pick sides, uh, rip, each other out say whatever we're here to discuss the topic of which how this all kind of started it actually zen uh this didn't start this weekend technically this started one like a couple months ago yeah so uh it started a couple months ago i believe there was a video made um and uh it it kind of puts some people in a bad light um it, which in turn turned into a, a war on, you know, Instagram and Twitter and a back yeah. and forth. Uh, a civil that, war, if you will. Uh, right, within the community. And so that, you know, Marvel affects the community, war. <laughs> it affects the community in a really bad way because the community becomes very divided. And, um, and so one of the big things that we want to do on the podcast is try and uh, not feed into that division. We want to just talk about it and see how we can make this better. But like Harley said, things started some months ago and, uh, and it's kind of, uh, get cooled down for a while. We saw everything kind of cool down, but something There's else a light came at there. the end of the tunnel, <laughs> but something else exactly. came this weekend and, uh, and it really caused that, that, you know, divide to grow even more. It reignited um, the flame. <laughs> <laughs> we have props on this podcast everyone yeah <laughs> give me props right yeah, it's pretty crazy because it, it really kind of stemmed out of nowhere it was it was an individual and again we're kind of kind of keep the names out of this i we pretty much know everybody knows who it is um it's probably in the thumbnail well, I mean, they're, on, they're on a thumbnail right yeah, yeah they're on the thumbnail so so we'll go ahead and well we can go ahead and say it i guess then so so gary uh, also known as King Pokemon by the community, whether he gave himself the moniker, or it was given to him. I don't really give a care. Um, he was on as a guest and they were discussing a card and basically he had um, made a comment. Now, if you watch the whole podcast, what he was saying, it's more understandable to a degree, but it's also at the same time, what he was saying was kind of a bit disrespectful in, in a lot of ways to many people out there. And, and, and it was Harley, regarding. Let me, let me just uh, let me just jump in there real quick. Yeah, it, was not our, it was not our podcast. Uh, it, was yeah. on, it was on a different podcast uh, yes. with some with investors. Mm -hmm. And so we want to make sure that we. Yeah, clarify we would never that allow because, such a, such yes. a controversial <laughs> topic to happen. Um, exactly. But, but, exactly. But because yeah. there's, there's, you know, you, you need to know the backstory a little bit. The podcast very, very was important. A an investor podcast on a channel that is all about investments, whether it be stocks, yep. uh, you know, Pokemon cards, or whatever is a hot topic that people can make money off of. And so that's where this discussion took place between uh with between those podcast members and Gary. And if you watch the podcast, you can tell they clearly really didn't understand Pokemon because they were asking a right. lot of questions. And he was trying to explain to them 
uh, as I guess as best as he, he thought he could regarding certain aspects of the card, which included. And so who would that be, uh, Sudan? Uh, the legendary Mitsuhiro Arita-san. Ah, Mr. Uh, yes. Uh, famous for doing uh, over 600 different artists or, or arts on Pokemon wow. cards, um, including, like for me, this one, which is the uh, Mew and Mewtwo Tag Team GX, uh, just the ultra rare. Um, mm, but uh, nice. I would want to go to a con and meet him and have him sign this card. Absolutely. I mean, may not, I mean yeah. it doesn't matter if it doesn't change the particular value to me that value matters. And I think in this argument, that was what was lost because there was comments said that was disrespectful in a way, if you take it from a certain context, but I see it a personal, a personal it. opinion complex, I would say actually. Right. Yeah, and it, sure. it, and yeah. the truth is there. Yeah. Yeah. It's you. you yeah. You never want to have the actual card sign. Yeah. You never want to have certain things done, but yeah, you do. If it's what you want to do, it's how right. you want to collect. And so, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, my favorite thing is about this whole situation, honestly, is to actually shed light on the artists a little bit more. Yeah. And for gave, sure. Gave oh, 100% did. I think coming that out was the that. coolest thing was a lot of the, well, I guess at least Arita, I saw him, um, basically thanking everyone via Twitter about like the love and support he received from those comments, or I guess because of those comments that were said. And, um, I'm sure, you know, that's really cool for a lot of them to see is, you know, basically, I'm sure they hear it all the time and, you know, all of us that would want to get stuff signed by them, but just to kind of have, you know, just it probably randomly for them, you know, they probably just hopped on Twitter and was like, wow, I have thousands of notifications of all these people being like, I love your art and tagging me in it and all that kind of stuff. So I think that was. Cool. And, you know, that is absolutely one of the most positive aspects of this whole weekend to come out of what has happened. Um, you know, we always want to know what can we do to to not pile things on but make it more a positive note and learn from oh, hey, it look how was <laughs> <laughs> he oh, always so plugging himself video. how how is your opportunity every video your guys, plug? <laughs> every video somehow so, he manages to plug his own stuff all the time but that was that was hey, a look, great got suit on positive here. spin oh yeah there's suit on as well that hey. was a great positive spin though <laughs> um on, yeah. on, and on what the community did to come out and support now again you know, not everybody is the same. Nobody collects the same. Nobody does. There's no one has the same mindset in certain things. You can have a group of people that are all very similar, but everyone has their own way of doing things. There's people who absolutely hate slabs. They won't put their card in a slab. They never will. They'll keep it in a binder. You have people who absolutely will never put a card in a binder. There's so many different variants of ways you can do things, you know, to a lot of people. This is what it originally was intended for. It's a game. That's what it, it was intended for. And to a lot of other people, and, and this is me, I can speak for myself, it became all about the art. You know, I love the art. And I did, when Pokemon first came out, the art captured me. Um, I did play the game. I just wasn't that excited for it. The art is what kept me in it. So, you know, everybody has a different opinion regarding the subject. And, but... The, what actually ended up happening was the content creator Frosted Caribou, again, she made the video a couple months back regarding the state of our hobby, um, you know, because we pretty much experienced one of the toughest years that this hobby has probably ever seen in regards yeah. to it was pretty much taken over by flippers. And that's pretty much what they were. And, you know, she made a great video. It was a beautiful video. It was done, really done well. As somebody who's in production, I thought it was, it was produced very well. Um, but it had a different, uh, the, the, the message behind it was for some people, the message was spot on. And for, I'd say the other half of the people, it was not spot on. And that's where the initial problem started. That was where it started. That's as Zen was saying earlier. The divide and, in the community. Yes, that's where the divide started. And then apparently uh, this podcast that uh, King Pokemon was on, this investor not channel. Ours. Not ours. <laughs> yes, not ours. On King Pokemon's, the, uh, she decided she wanted to comment on it. And so she basically took out I, – I would – I'm not saying this in a negative way, but I would call it an attack to a degree only because – 
it really wasn't warranted. I mean, he can do whatever he wants with his stuff. I mean, we, we can disagree about it, but I mean, I'm not going to go attack him for it, but it, she decided to take a stance for it. And that was her personal decision. And that's how this whole thing started. What I want to get down to everybody uh, is, and this is what the rest of our crew wants to do is, you know, we want to talk about not that issue. We want to talk about the state of the hobby and what happened and why and there's kind of no where we're going to exactly the future. And there's going to be a discussion of, do we think Gary is one of the reasons or the reason part of the reason, maybe he's not one at all. Can we name other people? You know, that's what we want to get into. Why did 2020 go down the way it did? And I think uh, grumpy, if you want to go ahead and lead us off on that, what, what were, what do you think, in your opinion, what was your reason that we saw an inflated market beyond anything I think any industry, any hobby has ever seen uh, such a jump like it did? What, what, what are your opinion on that? So um, my my initial thoughts are definitely pretty much just to blame COVID, uh, just because COVID kind of did this t- to a degree to a lot of things because you know, like a lot of things they have, you know, like, I guess Pokemon would have its printing press and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, like for, for example, with the weightlifting hobbies and stuff, um, you know, a lot of it is steel and like those, you know, places got shut down and stuff. So if you're not producing, how do you sell it at a normal price? You know? Um, but I think with Pokemon, there's, there's just so many things that happened with 2020. Um, I would say COVID and because of COVID, you have a lot of people stuck in the house and people who lost jobs, or at least if they didn't lose their job, they have more time being at the house so they can think of different ways to make money. And so, you know, because I'm sure you guys have even done it too, where you're just like, hey, like, you know, like maybe I might look into stocks, I might look into this, I might look into that, you know, because you have more time to do more research, you know, if you're not Bitcoin hit its biggest. Yeah. And, and that's the thing is, you know, I think it's easy to want to blame a person. But there's in this case, there's just not enough in my opinion, uh, like, I guess, reason to blame one specific person, because I don't think any one person is that powerful. I mean, maybe if, like, the president came out and was, like, invest in Pokemon. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> somebody that has just such a crazy audience. It's but, an like, executive hey, order. <laughs> right, you know, but, like, Pokemon. but outside of that, I mean, you know, there's just too many things that, Devotion you know. Pokemon's. <laughs> there's just too many things, I think, that affected it, and it's hard to name, you know, one thing. Um, and you know, from, from all of this, because people wanting to be able to make money and, you know, whatever invest, you know, you had people like, you know, Logan Paul and people with money who can invest hard and have a really big audience and stuff. Um, but yeah, I think that was, in my opinion, one of the biggest reasons was just basically COVID, you know, and what stemmed from that. So. No, excellent points. I, I, excellent points. I think we, we definitely all agree. COVID played a major, major factor in definitely what happened. I don't Uh, think you can argue any uh, any part of this, any part of anything right now without blaming COVID for something. (laughs) Uh, Because, I mean, with the shutdowns and stuff like that. But I honestly blame Logan Paul. I, 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 that whole situation, which there's other players also in part of that, which also includes King Pokemon. And I, I, I blame that. But how much did that have effect on the modern versus yeah. the the vintage? Because vintage has always been out of my reach, except for, I, I mean, I got a few Japanese packs from Zen when I was able to. But, <laughs> you know, I, I'm glad I was able to do that. But it's still kind of like it shouldn't have affected modern as much as it did. So I... I yeah, the idea that I you can't know. find stuff on the shelves and it led to people fighting in the parking lots and in the aisle, like that... I don't think you can really blame that on Logan Paul. So I think it's, I think it's, you know, there's a chain reaction that occurs with this type of stuff. And it starts with, you know, the Keanu Reeves chain reaction. Sure. (laughs) So, you know, like you could say, you could say, um, you know, (laughs) like for example, Gary Chuck started things off with telling the, the scalpers or his, his, following hey pokemon's going to be huge get into it and then you know there was a chain reaction that occurred where we also got hit with the with the uh 
you know, lockdowns and all that stuff. And that all kind of happened mm. in a, in a, uh, a, a chain reaction format where one thing happened and another thing happened and another thing happened. Exactly. And yeah. it really made everything worse. So there wasn't just one thing that caused the issue, but at the same time, the same thing occurs with modern and vintage. And because like, for example, Sudan vintage has been out of your reach already. There's a lot of people that it wasn't out of their reach yet. And they were still able to get vintage. What happens is the price of vintage inflated because of all of these factors, uh, the Logan Paul factor, the Gary V factor, um, the lockdown, everything. And that drove a lot of people towards modern because now it's easier to get modern and then modern inflated. And then modern became let's buy and sell it because that's what the scalpers are going to be able to grab, right? Scalpers right. are not going to be able to go yep. scalp something that's vintage because it's not brand new. It's not on the store shelves. It's, but what I'm saying is there's a difference between scalper and flipper. The scalper is the person that goes to the store, buys up the entire shelf of whatever the product is, and then goes online and sells it or sells it wherever they're going to sell it. Um, it's product that's at a store. They buy it all out. And so there's that chain reaction that occurred with modern, and vintage vintage is is now for the most part out of my price range i refuse to buy a lot of vintage product just because i don't want to spend that kind of money on it whereas it used to be yeah yeah so That's now true. what i ended up doing was i started buying more modern than i did vintage before i kind of had like a because then a scalper <laughs> <laughs> <Secretly>. <laughs> He's a flipper and a scalper. Yeah, okay. I'm a flipper and a scalper that doesn't literally does not sell anything. But yeah, that's that's me. He's a hoarder. I, he's I, behind I, Grumpy is yeah. going to be a conspiracy board of like who, what Zen yeah. does and who he I, is. I just thought of another all... reason as to why the you know the issues occurred. If you'd rather, you know, I just I could butt in real quick. It's a quick piece. Sure, sure. Hold on. So, this is Grumpy's conspiracy <clears> hour. <throat> so. So I think part of the reason as to why Pokemon took off is when I moved, I didn't have internet, so I couldn't put out videos and people weren't mm. tied up with, you know, the greatest content ever. And mm -hmm. thus they had more time to look into like investing hobbies. And I think that's Grumpy with the shameless plug of his <laughs> channel. Are we Harley? <laughs> hey, there could only be one. <laughs> okay, uh, get back to the real news. Okay. All right. I want to point out. I mean, Zen's making Zen's making great points. I mean, well, on top of that, I, I want to add to both of these is that you know scalpers used to scalp things that were readily available, like sports cards, um, sports tickets. Sports tickets. Well, sports started shutting down, so they had they weren't going to get any any substance mm -hmm. or anything from the government. So <laughs> they have no unemployment in their in their industry. So. Right. They went to Pokemon cards. There you go. I gave you more evidence for your COVID, Mister Grumps. Well, yeah, I mean, I was like I said, you to the... say that earlier. You've been saying that for a long time about the sports well, card. Uh, it, it, so, the like the same thing though with the COVID is, like I said, with the weightlifting stuff. Whenever COVID started and like all the gyms locked down, we looked into getting some gym equipment. And like, just to give you an idea, right? Normally, you can find you know weight. So you know, obviously, it's like you know weight. And it was like about a dollar a pound and it went up to like as high as like five dollars a pound. And it's like, that's too much to lift. Wow. I, I'll just go eat. Yeah. yeah. Like I was just like, <laughs> oh, my God, like my gains. I mean, when you really think about it, remember, we went through the, the whole like almost two months of you couldn't find paper towels. You couldn't yeah. find toilet paper. You and couldn't find a lot of the supplies. But I had the hookup. And that's the thing well, is there was there was people who would buy all that stuff like in crazy amounts of bulk when they could yeah. and then oh, try yeah. to open Amazon shops and stuff. Yeah. And like that's when Amazon started being like, no, mm -mm, no. But, like, you know, fine. another aspect of that, though, is, so, you know, a lot of those products, though, they're they're not made months in advance. Those products are made typically weeks in advance before they go out to sh store shelves. Yeah. Some products may be a little longer. The difference with Pokemon is. Pokemon is not doesn't just go, okay, we finished, we designed our set, we're gonna print it and have it out the next day. Guarantee you, and one hundred percent fact, these sets are printed out minimum six months in advance. So even when COVID did start, right, 
we didn't actually get the first affected set completely, completely affected. Um, I think it was until Vivid Voltage is what I was told. Now, granted, Darkness Ablaze, that set was affected. So was Rebel Clash with well, transportation see, issues. But it was already all printed, though. That was already ready. Yeah. And that's all, that's all based on Pokemon's data of previous sales. So, you know, when they turn those printing machines on, they're going by their previous year sales data of sets and they're going and then they add in a little bit of like, oh, well, this set might really hit hard. They may add a few extra points to it. But yeah. that's how they know to print. Yeah. But then with this huge influx, like you guys have all pointed out, of people coming into the hobby that were bored and never did anything before, this was all new customer clientele to Pokemon. They didn't factor in to print that much product. For all these yeah, new people, because that's not how business wanting to buy stuff. <laughs> exactly, because that's not how businesses work. Businesses use data to the minuscule decimal, and because yeah. they, they're it costs them money to overdo something. It, it'll cost them money to underdo something. That they, they, they got to be spot on. I'm getting some. I'm getting some fresh <laughs> news. Okay, for all you scalpers <laughs> and investors, what is this? Are you sure? Are you sure this is this is this is true? Okay. Invest in magic only. Don't buy anything else. Just Magic the Gathering, so that goes away, <laughs> and we can have our Pokemon. All right, that's not that's not that this is legit. Modern news. Horizons two. Get Pokemon all the magic so. off the shelves. Leave Pokemon alone. It's not worth anything anymore. Hey, Rudy from Alpha Investments will love that one. <laughs> he likes to move products. NSO. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> we, we we cut Zen off though. What were we, you were you had a point? Zen. I don't. So sorry. I don't know. I have no idea. I'm, I'm, mm. <laughs> mm. Well, that flash of news so, though. That was really big news though, guys. That was big news. That was huge news. Yeah. It was huge news. Uh, so then is that, is that your final say then basically on your personal opinion on what you think led to the issues of 2020 basically? Um, you oh, know, yeah. The- yeah. I, I, like we said, I mean, it, just to recap, I mean, it was a, it was a, a bunch of different things that occurred. Uh, there was a lot of people that, um, fed into that and it was it, it it doesn't help that you know i mean one of the big things that was brought up at one point was content creators also you know um mm-hmm. there was a huge influx of content creators as well uh when this occurred you know you got more people that are able to make sit at home and make a video uh of a pokemon opening so you had more people doing that as well and i'm not saying that content creators are the reason for this either uh even the big content creators if you really look at it content creators uh, the big name ones have been doing Pokemon content for so long, over five years, and this was not an issue. Um, right. So, so all of a sudden, we can't just say, "Oh, it's it's content creators' fault that we can't find Pokemon cards." Um, this was an issue before. It it's an issue now because of all of these other things. Yeah, for and sure. Sure, uh, content creators have a small piece in there, just like a bit of an influence. Know, a bit of an influence. There's a there's a factor in there for all of these things that cause the issues. With our channel, say I started collecting because of you. You know, we've all had that. Yeah. So I mean, look, we've. Well, I mean, I've gotten all. I've gotten the comments. Hey, I can't find product because of you. And I'm like, well, <laughs> I mean, I literally, I literally just opened up a booster box. I mean, it wasn't that big of a <laughs> deal. I didn't Dang go it, and say, you know, I didn't, I didn't show you <laughs> six cases. Or, or 20 cases of booster boxes. I literally just opened one booster box, but I, I you know, you still get those comments and there, are, and I, it's understandable. There are people that are upset because of they have not been able to find product. And so they, they need somebody to blame so that they can feel better. Um, and so I think that's something that's occurring as well. And it happens on Twitter and then it becomes a big divide in the community uh, where we're finger pointing and we're saying, you're the reason, you're the reason when really it's a lot of different things that happen. I mean, it's hard to go, it's, it's hard nobody, to go COVID, you're the fault, and then get an actual, like, something back from it. Cause but, everybody's gonna be like, yeah. Um, whereas yeah. if you go, this person, this content creator did this, you can cause an uproar, cause uh, potential grabs. I'm not saying that's sole reason. I'm just saying it is a good, you know, we all have done it once in a while, put a name in our title saying, hey, put some, you know, nefarious fi- people's fixtures on our thumbnails saying, hey, come check us out. It, it, it's just how the game works. But still, you know, 
you know, there is finger pointing going on that should just come on. And just the other thing- another aspect to it is geography. People don't consider things. You know, when, when Hidden Fates came out, we couldn't, we live in a major city. We couldn't find hidden. It was so difficult to find hidden fates every single yep. week. We'd go out and make runs everywhere to try to find hidden fates. And this is before the days. influx of people came in. Yeah. And, but then I, you'd see people who live out in the middle of nowhere. Um, they're like, oh, yeah, look, they'd show their target of Walmart with like so much hidden fates. You just cried. And you're like, oh my God, what the heck? You know, and people forget about geography and population, you know, does have mm. an effect as well on you getting your product. Yeah. Grumpy. I know I had a I had a hard time getting uh hidden fates. I mean, I did get a lot of it, but I it was not easy to get. Um, you know, I went to a lot of stores, I went week after week, like you said. Um, and I just I managed <clears> to be able to grab, you know, one or two products here and there. And then another one or two products here and there. So it wasn't like I went and bought the entire store, but I was able to get little bits and pieces to right. make the collection that I got. Um, you know, I, I, I got lucky with Pokemon Center. Uh, they put up Hidden Fate stuff on Pokemon Center, and I managed to be able to get some on there. Um, you know, I got lucky with another website where I was able to find some, but it was like gone almost instantly. I just happened to be lucky enough to be at the right time in the right, right. place. A lot of it. mine was the same lucky, like either I got there right at the right time or I yeah. got there right before the scalpers actually did because the initial start was the local game stores hitting. Yeah. And they started this for at least in my area and they're still doing it in my area. Right. And it's it's gotten so bad that I I I've I still haven't seen Shining Fates on the shelf. I mean, there's nothing at in my in here in Denver, Colorado, there's nothing available. And that's like talk about geography. We're we're an international hub, so we should have something. But it's well, even one of the with- problems. One of the problems with Hidden Fates too was though was its distribution aspect, not giving us a booster box by putting it in the giant ultra and great balls by putting it. You know the the pin sets were so very few and in and, and far between. Those those only came out for a short period of time, and they, those were gone. You never saw pin sets again. The majority of Hidden Fates product basically came through those ultra great balls, and then the tins. The tins. Um, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and so it was really difficult, except a lot of stores even stock a lot of that stuff, first of all, because they're so bulky. Yeah, the shelf but space. And- you just got so few packs. So when you went to the store, you know, we know what it takes to collect a set of Pokemon. It takes a lot of cards. If you're going to go for a master set or you're trying to get the major card from there, you can't just go buy one tin with four packs in and go like, yeah, I'm good. You, and these you- holiday sets are worse. Oh, terrible! I mean, but if you want the need- base set, it's easy. But if you want all the mm-hmm. secret rares and all the other stuff, that that's yeah. that's where that's that's the draw. You want to get the shiny, exactly. That's the, the shiny draw, like shiny car- <laughs> cardboard. And so you'd only um, get you'd only get these little these few packs. So yeah, you were drawn to go. Well, I'm, I'm gonna buy ten tins then because that'll give me almost what it's basically the equivalent to a booster box, you know, which is what a lot of us will buy or something. But you you were drawn to buy more in order to make the set happen. And again, I think that a lot of that came to the fault right. of, of how they decided to distribute the product. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> I agree with that. But now, uh, so going, going back to going back to what's going on and, uh, and everything with, you know, the, the arena artwork and, and everything like that. Um, you know, we discussed the, the personal collecting being, you know, what's really important for each person. And one thing that I think that we need to do as a community is respect everyone else's way of collecting. I think that is going to be well said, well said, huge in order for us to fix the community and stop the the bickering and stop the division. Because quite frankly, I I do not have any Arita artwork uh, are, uh, signatures on any of my cards. I, I would absolutely love to have a card signed by Arita. And for me, ones? yeah, for me, that's a, that's a huge, I mean, that would be huge. You know, um, at that point, I wouldn't even mind getting the card signed. You know, one of the things that like, you know, Gary, I would have the card signed personally. Yeah. One, one of the things that Gary mentioned in, in that podcast was he, he made it very, well known that the card was not the one that was signed. It was the the slab that was signed. And he specifically said, you never want to get the card signed. But see, because Gary is, is an investor 
uh, slash collector, but more on the investor side. And he's, he's seeing it from a value aspect where that signature might reduce the value of the actual card. And if you have it on the slab, it actually could increase it. In this particular case, because of the card that it was, that Beckett signed uh, card, um, the value doesn't really change with a signature, right? I mean, it's it's already- That was the point, and that was the point he was making, was yes. this card's already tapped at 300K. The Arita right. signature doesn't make it 310K. It's, so, right. it's 300K with or without the signature. That's what he was basically saying. If it would be any different if it was Arita versus Logan Paul signing. <laughs> How would that be? has his own thing now? He has his own official signature now. <laughs> What's the thing is, is what makes that different than the Arita, the man who's been working more closely, more effectively with the company, bringing us these beautiful artworks, bringing people into the industry more so positively. Oh, sorry. No, you just made a great, you I made think, a point out of everything I read yesterday. And I was probably one of the ones that read as much as anybody else, if not more. I was, I literally spent all day reading. And that was a point that nobody made. And that's a great point because Logan Paul did set something up with Beckett, I believe, to have his name recognized and stuff, which means that would add value. Well, I to believe. That, I believe. It was, yeah, I thought it was PSA. I believe it was. Uh, or was it PSA? It well, was PSA. Any, any card, any card that was submitted from the break that he did was going to get a special designation on the yep. slab that, you know, specifically mentioned that it was from his break. And that's going to bring, that's going to bring I, a value to it. I, it's going to bring like a value not. to it. I personally disagree with that whole aspect of it. Yeah, for sure. Because I don't think that PSA should be getting into that business of, Hey, this came from exactly. a break or this came from, uh, you know, a celebrity something specific some celebrity yeah, just bought YouTuber the car or whatever you know yeah. i mean i think that psa should not be getting into that deal they authenticate autographs completely understandable you know if you want to authenticate logan paul's autograph perfect okay go ahead and do that um but the fact that now you're saying okay this card is more special than other cards that are exactly the same just because it came from a logan paul break that bothers me. Um, Isn't that kind of like you're you're creating something? I, I don't, I don't even creating know. a market. Well, I don't even thinking, know if that's a prop. Yeah. Huh. So I mean, that from personally, I believe that that's wrong. Now that's neither here nor there with this whole discussion. I just I wanted to give my opinion on that. Well, because I, well, let's throw I a monkey wrench it. into that though. Let's throw a yeah. monkey wrench. Here now the people who are usually who are buying what Logan Paul might be selling or someone smaller is not the same client. That's probably going to buy from Gary. They're not the same person who's dropped 300 K. I read a lot of comments from people who apparently do buy high end items that said yesterday that they would not want that on there. They want it kept clean. Now we think that's personally, we think that's crazy. We're like, well, that's crazy talk. You know, I'm a huge person into art. I'm big Van Gogh, Picasso, you name them all. I've been to the museums in Europe. I've been all over. I love, I'm big on art in my house. We have a bunch of it. So to me, I would mean it's it's a huge th deal to see the artist signature on there. But I go again, to Comic Cons every summer specifically to get my <laughs> comics signed by the artists because right. I collect these comics specifically. Yeah, for the story. Yeah. But majority of I got a cover specifically just for a comic. I spent five by five different covers because yeah. they all different arts that I want, and I'm going to get them signed. I get the book directly signed, not the, not the slab, nothing else. Right. I wish I had a slab book right now just to kind of show the a difference actual on paper. Right. But I'm actually having the artist sign his actual artwork on there because that's the value there for me. Plus, in the comic industry, that does present a value. Yeah. The artists bring a big deal. Yeah. You get a Stan Lee signed autograph, that's going to bring high value. Oh, Why yeah. is that so jaded in the Pokemon side? In the card side, why can't the artist signature be worth well, something? I too? think I just think the way he was explaining it when I watched the whole interview with these people that he was on with, from an, a strictly investor side, his his argument was that no nobody who is buying those cards who has the capability of buying those cards, nobody's willing to pay them more money for the signature on the card. That's strictly kind of the point I felt he was making. The card is worth three hundred k. 
having that honor actually doesn't help it go up in value at all. Now, yeah. why he said he would take the take it off and stuff. Yeah. Now that part, I, I didn't have a problem with this stuff before. And I know a lot of other people did, but this part I did, why would you say that part? Like, Oh, I'm, I'd wipe it off. I kind of almost wondered if he was almost joking with it because as someone who's been in this longer than almost, in fact, he's been in Pokemon longer than anybody else in this, in this country. Um, again, one of the original people in the beginning, um, and he's an extremely intelligent businessman, extremely intelligent. That's how he made his living. I can't almost believe that he actually meant that. So right. I'm kind of sh- drawn to like, was that being sarcastic? Was he being real In about it? In the audience, he was telling it to, too. You can, that, that, the, con- yeah. the context that was taken from there, too. He was talking yeah. to investors. So, And it comes down again to it, it's it's – it's the context of how this all went down. And I think that's one of the biggest problems that everybody is missing amongst any argument or debate that anybody has, you know, it's so often we get a news, a news thing. And all we see is, you know, so-and-so is, is dead and we start flipping out over it, but we didn't see the full context of how they died. You know, there, there could be a million or a million reasons why they may have been hit by, you know, an oncoming drunk driver or something, you know, and that, that kind of changes things up. Or maybe there was an accident. Somebody lost control of their car in the stormy weather. I'm waiting that for people- Grumpy to be like, who died? Well, yeah, no, I'm, just trying to, I'm just trying to figure died? out. I'm I want to know how this relates. The correlation. Yeah. Yeah, I the correlation is it's, it's context. It's taking things right. into context. And the, the biggest problem that people don't do anymore is take into context the whole story, everything that's going on. We may not like what he said, but he was speaking to a strictly investor audience. He was giving them what this card sells at. It doesn't matter that the thing is on there or not. Again, my only issue was why he added in the comment about wiping it off. Again, yeah. was he being sarcastic? Was he being honest? Was he just joking? I don't know. You can think what you want. That's everyone's Weird opinion. Weird flex, bro. Weird flex. But it, 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 was, it, it was not something I felt that was the greatest thing in the world. But again... I'm not here to judge other people on on that type of stuff. Whether you're a male or a female or a, anything in that matter, I am not here to judge on that. He he's welcome to do that. First of all, I'll never be a client. Well, I, I shouldn't say never because you never know I could win the lottery, you know. And I'll say bye bye to all you people, and I'm gonna go buy up everything in Target. Here at first, um, he's gonna drop us like a hot. I, yeah. I don't even know what you would drop hot, like a mic. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go buy a bunch of booster boxes and I'm gonna show them all up. And he's gonna put them in his bathroom. And be like, look, I'm leaving these here for 20 years. Uh, that's exactly yeah, right. <laughs> so no, he won't. He'll open them all live, and we'll all make him do it. Yeah, I've. I've <laughs> Yeah, I have no he, he won't be able to keep any of that sealed. <laughs> yeah, there's no way. There's no way. No way it happened. But ultimately, whatever he does, that's his business. Again, I'm not yeah. a client. I'll probably never be a client for that particular card. Again, once those, it's just different people at that level. Yeah. They think way differently than us. You know, we're very hard and passionate people. Look at my background. Look at Zen's background. Look at Sudan. I don't like anything. And that's all I'm going to say about the backgrounds right now. So <laughs> <laughs> um, you can tell we are passionate people about what we like to do. And uh, I'm not saying he's not passionate by any means. Get, I think he is a passionate grumpy, We got cards and stuff I'm sorry, over can here. Can we get Grumpy a green screen? Can we post like, that up there? With like a fake background or something like that just so we can, you know. Go tape that up on the wall, Grumpy, so we can say you have at least something. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. There you go. What is he? The Here. back of the street. I mean, that looks that looks absolutely terrible. But <laughs> oh my god, has no Pokemon in it. Um, That's hilarious. Yeah, but, but yeah, my- totally. And and the whole thing is, you know, like I said, we need to we need to figure out how to understand everybody's way of collecting and understand each other. Mm-hmm. And uh, and everybody's got a different opinion on what they, you know, blocking his background. <laughs> yeah. How they want there to collect was a, There was a stuff, great so. word. There was a great word that was thrown around a lot yesterday from both both sides of that argument. I almost don't even want to say it. Gatekeeping. Yeah. And Ooh. so there's definitely a lot of gatekeeping based on the definition. It was going on on both sides. At the end of the day, like I said, everybody can do what they want. If you want to leave your cards, I remember I used to put my cards in the hard plastic um 
the dividers, uh, the ones top loaders, right? Which is what yeah. most people still use. People used to comment to me, "Oh my god, how can you put your car in a top loader? That's so crazy." There's Everything no sleeved, like not sleeve. We're talking about top loaders, though. When we used to get comments from people telling us how crazy we were for putting our cards in top loaders, and I was just like, "What, really?" And then you had people would chime in and be like, "Yeah, you should be using, um, you should be using the, uh, you should be using card savers." Um, you shouldn't be using top loaders. You should go out and spend all the, your money on the more expensive card savers. And then you had people like, what, what's that, Grumpy? Not, like these are all unsleeved because they're just common and uncommons. And there just you go. <laughs> yeah. I awesome. sleeve up everything. That's just my – see, everybody yeah. does it the way they want to, though. That's, right. that's, the, that's point. The, the word that should be thrown around is respect. Correct. Respect how people do their thing. No matter what yeah. it is, just respect it. You may not agree with it. You may not like yeah. it. Just go, hey, that's cool. You like Pokemon too. I will say I, I won't I won't respect the people who waste the cards purposefully. Oh, and God, I'll just yeah. leave it at that. Well, I'll just leave it yeah, at that. That's a different story. Yeah. You know, we, we reached out. I remember we had a little boy from India, <laughs> um, and it took a long time for him to gain my trust. And, you know, we after getting to know him after a while and looking into the situation where you know we sent him a care package you know there's so many kids around this world there's so many people around this world who will never have an opportunity to open a real pokemon card and i just think it's a travesty when there's content creators out there who think it's funny to and you know like i got to make some content to to chop Just-try cards up cards, i'm not about, yeah. i'm not about that at all but again i'm not going to do anything to you other than I'm not going to watch you. I'm not right. going to support right. you. But I'm not going to go out there and go, I need to go write a tweet about how horrible this person is and I'm going to call them out. And that's that's gate gatekeeping, essentially. You're you're deciding and and what other people should do. I completely think it's wrong. I'm against it. I'll never support people like that. But I'm not going to go out there and tell them, you know. I mean, if there were a friend of mine, it was Sudan. And he said, yeah, I'm going to cut this card up. I'm like, hey, man, please don't do it. I'll tell you a great example. <laughs> take on such a sad little I, made- like. <laughs> I mean, I did that with a with a with a friend content creator that um, was discussing put, potentially doing like a flip it, flip it or rip it, you know, whatever. Yeah. And I said, I said, listen, I, I I'll you know, you do what you want to do, but I stop watching and following any content creator that does that, and and I just flat out said that, and uh, sure enough, I mean, they they did it. And I stopped watching most of the content mm-hmm. because it, it bothered me. And I was like, I don't want to, I don't support that, but that's me. You know, I'm not, I don't want to go out there and, you know, bad mouth these people and say, yeah, th- th- you know, this is, this is wrong. Don't do it, whatever. And then make it a public situation. But um, that's just the way it is. And, and I just don't support it. Just like I stopped just a cl- buying certain products that I don't agree with the way that, business a business is run or the way that they're doing you know what i mean that that kind of stuff and but that's me that's me on a personal level it's like clickbait clickbait's the same thing i mean i took some heat a couple months ago because i did a a a thumbnail but the the thing was i added a question mark onto it which made it (laughs) which made it but it's it's funny but it's it's serious though it made it a question but i took some heat because people didn't read it as a question and so they said it was clickbait and said that they were going to unsub for me because they don't they don't like clickbaiting people. I said that was never my intention. It was a question. I felt it was completely justifiable and was good as good as it was. I went ahead and changed it because I I liked the person too much to I didn't want to lose them. But it happens. There's people who get very upset. There's so many things people get upset at. Yeah, you know, a lot it's of countless. Factors. But let me give you real quick before we move on here because we're gonna we're gonna be wrapping this up. So my personal opinion is very similar to Zen's. I have been saying now for almost two years, I actually was very big into the wine industry for many years. I actually wanted to open up my own wine business and uh, went to France. I actually went to several places. I was real big into it. And so I followed this guy on YouTube who he his family owned a wine shop and he would do these crazy wine tastings and it was really crazy but it was entertaining and he was entertaining and i was like man this guy's awesome and i became a fan of his 
eventually he ended up taking over the business and he be, grew up to the, be this really big YouTuber. And now he's become a huge investor. And his name is Gary Vaynerchuk. Gary Vaynerchuk decided to get into the sports card world several years ago and start investing in sports cards. He said he saw a market for, for making a lot of money in sports cards. And that's when the sports card market started happening. About two years ago, he put out a video on YouTube telling his millions of followers that the next big thing is Pokemon, that they need to start investing and in getting in hardcore into Pokemon. That was suddenly around the hidden fate, the hidden fates era. It was before hidden fates, but it was around then that hidden fates was a popular set. We started seeing a lot of new people coming in, but there was a lot of people buying stuff up and starting that flipping process as Sudan had mentioned earlier when he used to go out and try to find hidden fates. Then he's got, if you Google, if you Google him or you go to YouTube, you'll find he has a lot of videos regarding investing in Pokemon. And then he did a video last year around January, February. He did a big investment video telling his flipper crowd, you need to start flipping Pokemon. You can find the video. We have it for you, but you can find it on YouTube as well. And that is really when the hardcore sports flippers got into the market. Technically, I personally believe it happened before COVID. Do I think COVID had a, have a play in it? 100%. But those sports card flippers got into this before COVID hit. And that's when it really got bad. And I started talking to these people at the store when I saw them. And I knew what they were all doing. I have, I'm, I'm friends with one of them today. If it wasn't for him, he helps get me product. Uh, you know, it, because I can't get it. I don't know how he gets it, but he gets it. I don't even, I pay retail for it. I don't pay double, but I'm the only one he does that for. Probably because I know a secret, but he's, he's a <laughs> friend of mine now. But that's what happened. That's exactly what happened. Gary Vaynerchuk, in my eyes, not Gary, because Gary went on Pawn Stars years ago, and that didn't inflate the market. Logan Paul, what he's doing is strictly for people who are millionaires. None of us are in that situation. I'm not worried I about mean, what Logan Paul does. I mean, you don't has. know where he, I'm at. He might still have some influence I have a with in people account that somewhere. watch. You know what I mean? Like, like people who are like, ah, man, I can't get in on that, but I'll buy this instead. But I, I see where you're going, though. For sure, I would agree. Logan Paul's is a lot smaller. Wish it, I it would be very minute. minute. It would be very minute. And not, not enough to put blame on him for what has gone on for the past year. Nor Gary King Pokemon, either. I don't think any of these people are, honestly. I really place all the blame on him because I've been watching him for so many years. And I've seen his videos. And I've seen what he tells his people to do. And if we all know that the majority of these people are sports card people. The majority of them. You go on eBay, you go on their stuff, you'll you'll look at their you look and look at their selling list, and they'll have tons of sports boxes, all the panini stuff, the boxes, or whatever they call those things, the ba blasters or something. And then they'll have Pokemon stuff. Well, not and, only that though, when you go to like your retail stores, they also aren't selling the sports stuff anymore. They kind of refused. At least Target. Well well now everything yeah, but it's because they finally had to put their, their foot down after so much has been going on. Right. Um you know, again, the news the news didn't tell the truth recently about that incident at Walmart. Yeah, either. You, you know Target. those were sports or, Oh, oh yeah, no, the, yeah. The, the, the yeah. one. Those were sports card flippers. If you watch, they all took sports cards except one guy who threw one one ETB in his cart. They left all the ETBs up there. There was Champions Path or whatever it was and some other stuff. Those were sports card flippers. The yeah. person that the, – the big one, though, that caused Target to say, that's it, we're done, that was over sports cards. It wasn't over Pokemon either. But yeah. the news made it out to be that way. So at the end of the day, I personally think that COVID plays a role, of course. But ultimately, I think, like Zen said, with COVID hitting, a lot of people um, had a lot – did it, couldn't do anything. Like Sudan said, a lot of people were dropping money on bets, sporting events, things like that. Had nothing to do. They all follow Gary Vaynerchuk. He is basically, he's the lead person in this whole mess and as far as I'm concerned of why we saw the Pokemon market go insane. But that's my personal opinion. Um, and again, I think- Please go back to selling WWE tickets and not my Pokemon cards, please. <laughs> or your concerts or Or go to Magic. Magic? 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 Horizons 2. 
surprises too. But anyways, guys, um, yeah, so this is all of our personal opinions. Again, you know, we just want to, at the end of the day, what we would like to know from you out there, comment below, not what you think yeah, somebody no did drama. wrong. No drama. Okay? We want to know how do you think moving forward, we can make this community a better place a lot of people don't view this as a community i mean yeah i'm not friends with everybody out there and neither are these guys and we're not looking to be friends with everybody out there you know but we all do share in the fact that we love the hobby we love what's going on what do you think would be best to improve this hobby or community whatever you want to call it let us know in the comments below okay also don't forget to smash the like button on this video everybody we want to make sure that we get that algorithm pushing us out there as we continue to grow. It helps us out. It's free, costs you nothing. So again, if you wouldn't mind, smash the like button. Again, all the information that we've said today, you'll be able to find in the description. Grumpy, what do you got to say, man? We have a treat for you guys, the viewers. Yeah. So, so I, I think we uh, we went a little long on the discussion and uh, and didn't mention the codes, but uh, we do have the codes for you guys for PokeCharles.com. Like we said, we are going to have the link to PokeCharles.com down in the uh, description. You guys can click on that. And we have it on the screen here too. Uh, we'll we'll put it on the screen. Uh, <laughs> we <laughs> who's um, editing this? <laughs> so I believe I believe this these codes are good till the end of the week which I believe is Sunday, if I'm not mistaken. Um, we will have different codes each week for different products. So for now, the, the current codes that we have for you are 10% are. off Chilling Rain products. And the code for that is C-A-P-C-R-10. That's CAP C-R-10 for 10% off on Chilling Rain products. And we have cap gc25 that's c a p g c25 and that's a 25 percent off psa and cgc slabs i was gonna say what does the cg stand for or the gc i mean so everyone cards. make sure everyone knows great that's cards. right that's yeah. right so great cap cap for those of you that don't know <laughs> cap is the shortened version of cardboard addicts podcast so we use that cap uh Again, cap CR ten and cap GC twenty five. That's right. Guys, ten percent, everybody. Yeah, ten percent off Chilling Rain is great. Twenty five percent off PSA and CGC slabs. I think that's huge for those of you that are graded card collectors. Um, go check or out. Want to buy your first one? You know, or you want to get into it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I think there's great discount codes, and that was one of the big things that we wanted to push for with this sponsorship. Um, it wasn't about us getting uh, the it product was more was for you guys. We want to make sure you guys are being able to take advantage of some community. <laughs> That's right. So and we, we want to we'll end have that more future stuff as here. well. Yeah. And yeah, we'll we will have forward. more. Yes, we have more. Uh, we will be having giveaways um, courtesy of Poke Charles. So there will be giveaways on the channel. So again, you, we need you to subscribe to Cardboard Addicts Podcast, please. Are you giving, are you that, giving that away? Grumpy? Not at all. Yeah, that's, oh, uh, that's probably. I just wanted to show. What are you doing, Grumpy? Time? Ding, ding, ding. That is the worst time. <laughs> that, that is, is what? <laughs> that you, like, was so false troll. advertising a giveaway. What like what a troll. We're gonna get. I feel like. <laughs> see, I feel like Grumpy now has to give those away. Nope. Yeah. Yep, Grumpy. I mean, that's you it, man. You can't do that. You can't. You can't. We're talking oh, about yeah. giveaways, and you're like putting up cards. I've been holding and it you, one to show it off because those it finally. For those of you in the podcast, for those of you who can't see, Grumpy, as I was telling you guys about the giveaways, holds up a Shining Fate, Shining Charizard card he just pulled, and then his Vivid Voltage, Rainbow Rare, Secret Rare, Pikachu card, right as we were talking about the giveaways. So everybody, apparently he's not giving those away. But Sorry, again, PokeCharles.com is being kind enough to supply us with the giveaways so we will have more stuff coming up to you again you need to be subscribed to cardboard addicts podcast you need to be subscribed to pokey charles as well on youtube okay again now i know we're also on the um on the uh for those of you who listen on the audio side okay so if you can't make it to youtube and you can only hear us on the audio side we're going to figure something out in terms of the giveaway 
Um, we'll let everybody know when that when that comes up. But for right now, again, everybody, whether you're listening in the audio side or on the YouTube side, one last time, everyone, CAP, C-A-P, Cardboard Addicts Podcast, C-R, this is for chilling rain only. You're getting 10% off your orders from PokeCharles.com. And again, it's good till the end of the week. And again, graded cards, everyone, 25% off if you're looking to get into it. And I think real one real thing real quick, everybody. Uh, before we wrap it up here, uh, some quick news. I did speak to Leonhart this week, and Leonhart gave me a little bit of information regarding his pop-up shop. It's looking like November is when they're going to be doing the pop-up shop. It's still not 100%, but he did tell me that November is their goal for the pop-up shop. Uh, so I get a big shout-out to Lee out there, uh, Leonhart, for um, I giving the information. from that guy. Oh, nice. <laughs> Ooh, got friend. some mail. Nice. I greatly appreciate you giving the information. Also, Yu-Gi-Oh! King's Court releases uh, this week, July 8th. So you Yu-Gi-Oh! guys out there, get your new collector's rares. You got all those jokers out there. You got the um, the new monster cards as well. So good luck with your Yu-Gi-Oh! stuff. And then Flesh and Blood announced the brand new next set, which is going to be um, Tales of Aria. So Kingdoms was just the uh, the code name, and basically they've released the brand new set, and it's going to be September 24th, brand new Tales of Ari. It's a full set. So that's all I got from the news category. I think we might have some Pokemon Go news real quick. Anything, Grumpy? Uh, yeah, so, um, <laughs> so Pokemon yes. Go has yes. uh, <laughs> Least, uh, we just we just can't get Harley to stop talking. He just he just went into like this whole thing. Go ahead, Grumpy. Go right. ahead. So uh, they they're doing a, we got like a, a week special celebration. Years. Yeah, there's like a celebration thing for basically the starters and um, the flying Pikachu all to celebrate the five years of Pokemon Go. So five dollar football. Um, I wish it, you know I would take that, but. Bye. Um, <laughs> Five dollar foot long. We're about I'm to get hungry. hit with a copyright claim. What are you guys doing? We already did. Oh yeah. yeah. Thanks, Harley. Yeah, thank you, Harley. You're welcome. <laughs> Twice. Two, actually. Right? Two copyright claims. Thanks, Harley. But yeah, so check out Pokemon Go if you're a Pokemon Go player. Read up on the news. Uh, it looks like it'll be a pretty fun little event. It'll be a good way for you to get your starter Pokemon and special flying uh, Pikachu and Darumaka. Mm-hmm. And you'll have to pay for something, I'm sure. No, it's Pokemon no. Go. Here's a, I'm gonna give away the back of this card here as a code back of the card. <laughs> so, anyways, everybody, that's gonna do it for us here at Cardboard Addicts Podcast. Again, I want to apologize to everybody out there. We were supposed to be live today, and it was unfortunate. But we will plan a live again as soon as we know. And make we sure we can actually go live. You know. Yes, we gotta make yeah. sure we can actually go live. <laughs> So thank you to everybody out there. Don't forget to leave us that comment. Where do you think we can go within the positivity aspect of this hobby moving forward? Uh, forget to smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel. If you're not subscribed already, everybody, share it. Recommend it to other people. And then, of course, you can always hear us on Spotify, iTunes, Anchor.fm, iHeartRadio, a lot of those podcast sites. You can find us out as there as well. So that's going to do it from all of us here. Thank you so much, everybody. Happy Independence Day to those of us, uh, those of you out here in the United States. Have a happy and safe holiday, everybody. Have a great one until the next episode. Peace out, everyone. Here's your back.